Shut up and sit down. Episode 21. Nope. We're going to start this over because it's not 21. It's 27. We're leaving that in there. <laughs> Whatever. Take two. Episode 27 of No One Asked Us. Uh, he's Craig Shout. I'm Logan Lee. We are recording this on Monday afternoon, evening. Uh, we'll have this up for you guys on Tuesday. Craig, how the hell are you? How was your weekend? Fine. Uh, yeah? I, nothing sticks out, so I don't think I did anything. I can't remember. That's, that's, is that remember. a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Um, probably bad. We didn't okay. do anything, but. You're, um, I've, I've thought about this. You're probably not going to be doing nearly as much traveling on the weekends now. Are you? Uh, no, that's not true. <laughs> oh, it is starting on the. Uh, well, I mean, I guess you're gonna, you're going to be solo traveling to solo football traveling. games, correct? Yes, yes. starting yes. on the 28th, which is the first Illinois football game. I will be gone theoretically every weekend at either an Illinois football game. There's a one wedding, I think, two weddings. There's two weddings that I'm going to mixed in there. So, so yeah. This weekend is the first, the last weekend that I have nothing on my calendar as of now. So it's well, it's gonna it's gonna heat up. Yeah, and I, gonna and I be a little it. busy. You got some <laughs> got some stuff going on. Yeah, got some uh, got some football games to go to. Have you secured your your Louisville season tickets too? I mean, I know you talked no. about there's a lot of uh, scheduling conflicts, so you probably yeah. can't go to many of them. But uh, didn't know if you uh, still went after those or not. No, no season tickets for Louisville. Um, I think I'll only go to two. I think I'll only go to two games. Um, uh, and I haven't looked at basketball. I'm sure I'm not going to get basketball either because I feel like basketball will be even more pricey here than it will be at, for Illinois. And I wasn't going to get Illinois season because they're too pricey. So, so yeah, no season tickets for for Louisville. Maybe in the future we'll see how we'll see how I like driving to Champaign for the home games. I mean, that's seven hours on the road every day to watch a football game. So this might be the one and only year I get Illinois football season tickets. So, so you're we'll just, see. you're just going to do go there and back. Maybe most every time. Um, I think for the early kicks for like the noon kickoff games, I'll probably try and go Friday night and stay with a buddy and wake up and go and then come back Saturday if it's a uh, the night games, I might drive and then stay Saturday night. So I'll probably stay unless it's like a mid afternoon game where I can drive, wake up at a normal time, drive there, watch the game, and drive back. But I don't know how many mid afternoon games they're going to have this year. So yeah, so we'll just see how it goes. But likely stay in Champagne for a night, which will be cool to see people and and not completely abandon Champagne. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Well, yeah, that's going to be heating up for you. Um, we're going to be talking about some college football stuff here uh, a little later on in the show. Um, so we'll get into more of that. Uh, my weekend, I was I was back at back at home for the weekend. Uh, my dad's birthday was over the weekend. So happy birthday, Tim. Um, and yeah, that was about it. Uh, what did is see he, a movie. Like 35 years old? 40 years yeah, old? Yeah, we'll say that. 35 years old. Yeah, just five years <laughs> older than me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I did did see a movie over the weekend, so I'll have that to talk about a little later on. Um, hey, me too. But other than that, yeah, we got some movies. We got. I doubt. I, it, I doubt it was the same movie. I doubt it's the same movie, and I don't know if you watch if you've ever seen the movie that I watched. So, well, I'm excited see. to talk about this. <laughs> so we'll get to that a little later on in the show. But uh, we do want to start off with um, the biggest, most watched single regular season baseball game in like the past six years happened yeah. last week yeah uh major league baseball for the first time ever uh, now they attempted to do this last year but obviously didn't happen uh but for the first time ever major league baseball had a regular season game in the state of iowa at the field of dreams movie set site the movie set location um the white Sox and the yankees played a game um on on thursday night of last week um now, this wasn't at on the field itself from the movie. This was on a, a field. I'm sure everybody that's listening to this probably has already heard this, knows what's going on. But they essentially built a sec, uh, another field at the, the same location, um, just off in the distance from, from the farmhouse, from the field that was already there for the movie. 
They built a field that they could play a major league baseball game on. Um, I unfortunately did not have the privilege of watching the, the game in its entirety. Um, but I will tell you what I know and what I saw, what I did see live and what I did see uh, later on. It was far and away one of the most exciting baseball games I have ever witnessed any part of. Uh, not just for where it was located um, and all the hoopla surrounding that, but the game itself was absolutely incredible. Um, White Sox uh, took down the Yankees nine to eight. Uh, it was come from behind for both teams at one point, uh, several home runs. And then in the end, it was Tim Anderson going deep to take the game for the White Sox, the, the red hot and really fun to watch Red Sox. Uh, before Sox. I have a few questions for, yeah, White Sox, excuse me, not <laughs> Kyle Schwarber's Red Sox. Uh, before I have a few questions for you about this, but general take on the experience, the game. I know you watched it. I assume you watched all of it or at least most yeah. of it, yeah. uh, watched it live. So what, what were your thoughts on the game, the experience, all that stuff? I don't know that there's any hyperbole in this, the coolest baseball game I've ever watched. Yeah. The coolest, like there is nothing that's even close to it. The only thing I can think of is the first little league world series game they did. Oh yeah. A couple of years ago cool in too. Williamsport. That was really cool as well. And then it started this whole players weekend thing, which they're continuing, which I really like, but Thursday night, the field of dreams game was the coolest baseball game I have ever seen from the atmosphere to the storylines to the game itself, um, you touched on it. It was a great baseball game. Probably not the best actual game, although it was really good. There are a couple – I mean, there are probably a lot more that were better because this was a August regular season game. But um, in terms of experience, the coolest game that Major League Baseball has ever put on. I think it went off without a hitch. I don't – I can't think of any complaints I had during the game. I mean, it, it was – it was perfect. The entrance with Kevin Costner walking out of the corn, he's kind of standing there in the outfield, kind of looking around. And then the players just emerge from the corn, like in the movie. I mean, I got, I got chills immediately, immediate chills. Just, we were just sitting there just watching it. And I kept, I kept saying it and I keep saying it here now. This is so cool. This is so cool. I'm so glad major league baseball pulled this off. The only thing that sucks about it is that the Cardinals were supposed to play in it last year and they didn't get to. Now it's the Yankees playing the White Sox. Um, that's the only negative about it, but it was, it was awesome. And when Anderson walked to the plate, you can ask Christy this. I said something to the effect of give me a walk off and then first pitch. You, you tweeted it. Yeah, yeah, you tweeted hit, something about I, it. I did. I hit send as the pitch happened. I wasn't. I mean, I know Tim Anderson swings at the first pitch more than a lot of like more than the majority yeah. of Major League Baseball players, but I wasn't expecting him to swing at the first pitch. And as the pitcher was in the windup, I hit send on my "Give me a walk off, Tim" tweet, and then he hit it. And I mean, what would you have paid to be there? If you had the funds, how much would you have paid to go to that game? Well, I saw what tickets were going for, yeah. and I'm not sure that I was going to be able to shell out uh, four digits uh, to go to a single or a single or gosh, a regular Great season, season. Baseball, baseball game. I do know somebody that was there. Uh, I have no idea how he got yeah, his did. tickets, if he paid for too. them or, or whatever, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I would have paid a good amount of money for it, but I wouldn't have paid. Unfortunately, I just I, I wouldn't pay that. Yeah. Uh, now, had you had I known what the game itself was going to be, I mean, that might sway me a little bit more but you don't know that i mean it could also could have ended up being a 10 to nothing blowout um you don't really know what you're getting into when you buy those tickets but uh yeah i mean i, I definitely would have paid a good amount of money for it i've still never been to the site um and that's something yeah. that i was talking about with my dad over the weekend uh um, i'm surprised he's been, he has that. been there i know um it's just i don't know for whatever reason it's just there's not a lot there's not else or much else around it yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things that I could I could have seen us doing like as a family vacation type of thing when we were kids. But usually our trips have revolved around either my brother's baseball tournaments or we would go to see, you know, a major league game or we would go to see go get a, a theme park or something like that. But so 
that's a destination that I could definitely have seen us going to if there was like something else nearby to entertain yeah. some children. Yeah. Um, but just driving, you know, however many hours out to the middle of nowhere in Iowa to entertain some kids probably wasn't going to be a thing that my parents were looking to do. Um, now that I'm in my adult years, uh, when I can do these things on my own, um, yeah, it kind of surprises me too that I haven't gone. Uh, but again, there's just not much else out there. Um, so I, I will get to it at some point, hopefully sooner rather than, rather than later. So I did have a reason to go, not a reason to go, but I, I easily could have if I wanted to. So when I was in high school, I think we started going like maybe my seventh or eighth grade year. And my parents went all the way through, I think till a couple of years ago on president's day weekend, they would go to Dubuque, Iowa to go skiing, snow skiing, which Dubuque, wow. Iowa is 22 minutes away from Dyersville. And I had no, every time I went, I had no idea that we were that close to that. Well, I'll be it. You were going, it was, you were going February, February. Yeah. So I'll so be, it, it was would, February. Yeah. But I don't know still that that's on your mind. Exactly. Exactly. You're not thinking of a baseball field in February, but every year I didn't go every year, but four or five times I was 22 minutes away from field of dream site. And I never one, I never went to, I didn't even know I was that close to it. So I had the opportunity to go, but shame on my dad for never even telling me that it was that close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. I did text uh, yeah, you something it's... during the game uh, about Costner. Uh, yeah. You asked me about Costner's best performance or something like that. So a different question where does field of dreams rank on baseball movies? Um, it's definitely in my top three. Okay. I would say we actually just watched it. Um, obviously, I mean, I'd seen it, you know, right. several times as a kid, but right. I hadn't watched it in a while. I realized, uh, we watched it at my parents' house that set up the projector outside on Saturday night and, and watched it out there. That was kind of a cool, um, experience to do that. But, uh, it would be in my top three. Um, Moneyball is, is a personal favorite of mine. I know it's, you know, more of a modern one, um, yeah. but Moneyball is definitely up there for me. There are so many um, good baseball movies. There's, there's a lot. And baseball movies, it was more of a thing, obviously, in the 90s, but they were some good kids baseball movies, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, Sandlot, Ricky of the Year, yeah. Little Big League, Angels yeah. in the Outfield. Bad News Bears. I mean, there's... Ooh. Bad yeah. news bears. Like there's, there's some good ones, especially for kids. Yeah. Um, you know, baseball movies, Moneyball is up there for me. Yeah. Um, but feel the dreams will be right up there with it. Bull Durham major league. Um, you know, that's probably the top tier, um, yeah. in my eyes. Um, you know, there's obviously plenty more good ones, but it would, it would be in my top three. I would, yeah. I would say we were, when we were watching it the other night, you know, it's different when you watch them. Cause as I said, it's been a while since I had seen it. So I need to so, watch it. You know, I'm kind of watching it. Oh, not necessarily critically, but, you know, you notice things, mm -hmm. you know, later on about, you know, okay, well, this is obviously it's a fantasy movie, but some of the scenes is a little, you know, a little ridiculous, but, uh, um, but no, it's, it's a great movie. Um, definitely one of my favorites, a favorite, favorite in our house growing up. Um, and yeah, that was, that was just a really cool experience. I, I wasn't, as I said, I wasn't able to watch the whole thing. It's not that I couldn't watch the whole thing. It's that I was late getting started watching the whole thing and by the time i got to i think i was in like the third inning watching it later and it got to be like 11 o'clock and then the game had actually ended and i knew it happened yeah. Yeah. and at that point I, was, I had to go to bed so yeah. um, i was able to still watch all the intro stuff i watched most of the pregame um them coming out of the the players coming out of the cornfield with costner that was absolutely incredible i i mean yeah. that was just that was just amazing I, I don't even know what else to say about it like it was just it was goosebumps inducing. Yep. I mean, it, like yep. that's the kind of thing, you know, and then watching the movie a couple nights later, just you kind of feel some of those same things. I mean, you, you forget yeah. how almost sort of creepy some of the movie is, but like in a good way, like it's just, yeah. you know, it definitely brings something out of you. Um, and, and to see them do that, uh, that was pretty cool. And then obviously, you know, everything that happened during the game and, yeah, that would have been a fun, a really fun game to be at for sure. Um, yeah. Not sure, again, that I would have paid $1,500 or whatever they were charging for, uh, but uh, I, I definitely would have liked to have been there. Um, the rumor on the street is that the Cubs are playing in it next year. Yeah, um, I, David I Ross yeah. kind of unintentionally let this slip out during a, during a press scrum, media scrum. 
yeah. um, last week. Uh, he kind of said something like, we're playing that next year, right? And then he looked over, I guess the report is that he looked over at the Cubs media person who kind of was like, <laughs> and he's like, oh, <laughs> I guess I'm not supposed to talk about that. So, so it sounds like the Cubs might be one of the two teams playing in the next year, which would mean I think there's probably a decent chance the Cardinals are the other one, but yeah. uh, that's not necessarily a guarantee. As you mentioned, they were supposed to play in it last year. So I could definitely see that being the case. Yeah. Um, I think the plan probably for this long term, if they keep it going, is that one of the teams will probably be regionally located at least really, yeah. Um, yeah. for help for tennis purposes, but also travel. Um, I know they did take a day off after the, after the game. Yeah. Uh, but did still, you almost I mean, say movie? yes, I did. Say movie. <laughs> almost say movie. Uh, They did take a day off after the game. Um, but I think, you know, but you still have, you know, several, um, you know, major league cities within a reasonable distance from there. So it's yeah. not like, you know, they're, that's going to be a huge issue, but yeah, it sounds yeah. like the Cubs are going to be one of the teams it would not surprise me if the Cardinals are the other one next year. Uh, so that would be cool. Don't know what Cubs team we'll see, but uh, you know, either way, that would still be a cool experience. Um, Speaking we, of we have Cardinals, it. the Cardinals are only four and a half out of a wild card spot. Congratulations. You're not going to get it. The, <laughs> the Padres just went after, just signed Jake Arrieta, who's been the worst pitcher in baseball and got cut by the Cubs last week after he's been playing horribly. And then they made a comment uh, to the media that was not very well thought yeah. of, um, yeah. which we don't really need to talk about, but I do, I do want to bring up the white Sox because they are a team that we, you know, highlighted early in the season when we did our previews and stuff because of, of the local flair for both of us, they're not either of our teams. I don't think either of us have a problem with the white Sox, um, but you know, we just, we don't have a lot. He didn't have a lot to say about them. You know, obviously you were high on the Cardinals and I was high on the Cubs and um, we just kind of let the White Sox thing kind of slide under the radar, but they're absolutely one of the best teams in baseball this year. Yeah. And did we, I mean, you were just as vocal as a lot of people about Tony La Russa. Yeah. I mean, at this point, like what, what's happening here? I mean, is, was this, was this the La Russa decision that was this the right decision? I mean, is that what got them over the, over the edge here? Were they going to be this good regardless? Like what's, what's happening here? I think they would have been good regardless, but what I think Tony La Russa has done has showed them how to win. Yeah. Uh, because they didn't have anyone on their team or in the clubhouse that had been successful like La Russa has. I forgot who they interviewed during the game. They interviewed someone either during the game or maybe Sunday night baseball before. I know they talked to Lance Lynn at one point, but I don't think it was him. One of the reporters for ESPN or Fox or whoever it was asked whatever player. And I, I hate that. I can't remember about La Russa and how it was criticized and, and all that stuff. And they, they said, He's been, it was Liam Hendricks. It was the closer who blew the game, actually, for the White Sox on Thursday, um, but got the win. Um, asked him about it, and he said when they made the hire, I loved it because I knew that he was a winner. He's like, once I found out when he was being serious and when he was joking, like how to tell the difference, like it made things a lot easier. You know, he, he knows how to do it, so we just have to trust him and, and all that stuff, so – the players seem to really be taking what he says to heart and, and realize that, you know, he's done it before. So it's, maybe it's not as bad as we thought back in January, February, when they made the hire. Uh, I still don't think they made the right hire, but if he wins them a world series, I mean, it's the right hire. So yeah, that's why we don't get paid to make those decisions. Cause I don't think either of us would have picked Tony La Russa to be a major league baseball manager in the year 2021. Are you? Do you at all follow uh, Cespedes Barbecue? I've seen. I see Jake it and Jordan. On, it. Did you see the bike? The whole thing with the bike trip that Jake went on. Um, no. This. This. You have no idea. Okay. So, um, Jake. Jake Mintz and, and Jordan Schusterman from Schusterman from uh, Cespedes Barbecue, which is a Twitter account that they started. Now they do stuff for Fox and for MLB and for the Ringer and all this stuff. But basically, on his on their podcast before the season started, after the Larusa hire or prior to the Larusa hire, uh, Jake 
Mintz went on his podcast and said, said, if the White Sox hire Tony La Russa to be their manager, I will walk from my apartment in New York City to Chicago. Wow. Short while later, the White Sox hired Tony La Russa to be their manager. <laughs> so Jake had to had to confront the issue that he had just presented for himself. He did not walk, uh, but he is a biker. And so he did bike from from New York to Chicago over the over the course of, of about two weeks um, and did that. But that's just kind of a sidebar, just kind of a fun thing to follow that I was kind of, because they he made various stops at different minor league ballparks along the way. He happened to be in South Bend one night, so they were there for a game. But anyway, that's a sidebar, neither here nor, ne- neither here nor there. Um, <clears throat> the White Sox, though, I mean, they're they're legit. I mean, they're, they don't have the best record in the American League. Uh, say, are I mean, they the AL favorite? I would probably say they are. Yeah. Um, their record obviously doesn't show it right now. Uh, if the season, I'm looking at the standings right now. If the season ended today, um, obviously they would win the division. That that division is awful. Um, but the the Rays, the Astros, and the Red Sox all have a better record than they do, and they have uh, the same record right now as the A's. So yeah. I mean, I think the White um, Sox are better than those teams. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I mean, they have a flashy offense. They have a, a really steady steady and strong rotation. Yeah. They now have two of the best closers in baseball um, at the back end of the bullpen. Um, Kopech and yeah. like uh, their whole yeah. bullpen. Yeah. It's, it's all tough. I mean, I would say they're the American League favorite for sure. Yeah, and um, they, they got I, this lead, and they built this without Eloy Jimenez and Luis yeah. Robert, who are now back. Yep. So Correct. add Correct. those to the mix. So yeah, they're going to be a fun team to watch down the stretch. I'm, I'm definitely yeah. excited to watch more of them. Uh, no ill will from my perspective, at least I, yeah. you know, I have nothing against nothing against the white Sox. would love to see them make a run and uh, maybe, maybe even win it all um, come October nec- November. I wouldn't necessarily call them like me a fan of them, but one of my best friends, uh, shout out Brandon Harden got drafted by the white Sox in 2012 like i think 2012 yeah um in the 10th round and he was in the organization for four or five years managed to made it to double a so um ever since then i've kind of you know they've been okay in my book because yeah they took a shot on him but um i wouldn't necessarily call myself a fan but yeah yeah no i get it um but either way there there's just somebody i felt like we needed to talk about a little bit just because we kind of kind of uh, focused on our teams and not really at all on that team. And uh, they're obviously the, the one of the three that uh, is going to be playing in the postseason. So I don't know that um, yet. We're all Cardinals okay. only four and a half out. All right. Hold on. <laughs> Let me just look at the national league standings. Oh, uh, we Let's can move see. on. Uh, no, I want to look at this because you seem to be. No, I told, look, I told you last week. I told you let's look at the wild card. Since you want to talk about your Cardinals. You are behind the Dodgers and the Padres and the Reds. And I don't think it matters after that. <laughs> I know, right? No, I told you last week what's what's going to happen. Tatis is back. They stuck him in right field. He went four for five, hit two dingers. The Padres are going to be fine. The Dodgers are going to beat the Dodgers. You will not get it. No, no. just stop. The it's reason over. the Cardinals are only four and a half back is because they swept two series, three against the Pirates and three against the Royals. And how many more times do you have the Cubs this year? Because you'll probably sweep them too. Twice. The Cubs Two, are rolling out a triple-A team, and it is awful. Yeah, um, And that's row, all right? I will say about that. I'm not – I don't care. It doesn't matter. I haven't watched a second of Cubs baseball since I left Wrigley Field two weeks ago. Schwindel's on a, um, on a heater, though. Yeah, Frankie. Frankie Schwindel. Um, all right, let's talk some college football. We are less than two weeks away from week zero – of the college football season, um, which will feature uh, the Illinois fighting Illini uh, hosting Nebraska in that first week of the football season. Um, we figured that this was probably a good time to do a little previewing of, uh, of the college football landscape. Probably we're not going to do so much um, Illinois previewing this week. I think we're going to talk more about just the country in general, the big 10 and the power five schools. And, you know, a little bit of a, you know, what we think will happen conference wise and, you know, maybe some playoff predictions. So um, I I think, I think the big 10 is probably the best place to start. Um, I don't know that it's the most interesting division in terms of uh, predictions and things. Um, But I think the big 10, there's, there's one clear favorite. The West could go maybe a couple different ways, but I think there's probably a favorite there too. Yeah. Um, but uh, 
I mean, is there any chance that anybody other than Ohio State uh, wins the Big Ten Conference this year? I guess there's a chance. Um, who would the, who who else do you think would would be in the running for that? I mean, until the games are played, all seven teams have a chance. Okay, spoken <laughs> like a true <laughs> Illinois Fighting Illini fan. Um, I mean, yeah, it's Ohio State's to lose, even even though they lost a lot of key players. Um, I don't think anyone takes them down in the East. Although last year, it, I mean, well, never mind. We won't get it last year. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I do think it's worth mentioning. I mean, I, Indiana was was the big shocker last year. Um, they yeah. didn't, you know, they didn't surpass Ohio State in the division. Um, but they had a they had a really good season. Um, you know, there was some obviously COVID was a factor. We'll yep. we'll just bring that up now. Uh, obviously, everything that happened in 2020 has an asterisk. In terms of COVID, uh, when we get to the Pac-12, they had an even bigger asterisk when it comes to, to COVID. But um, either way, I mean, Indiana was obviously in the mix there. Um, putting COVID things aside, you also have to factor in that Penn State and Michigan were both awful, yeah. which I don't know that you can count on that again. I mean, Michigan, yeah. Michigan hasn't been consistent in a while, so maybe. Um, but for, to, for Indiana to be the second best team in that side of the conference again, um, I think will be tough, um, but I mean, who knows? I mean, there's, there's, they definitely still have a lot of the same talent. Um, they're going to have some, you know, a couple of at least interesting conference, non-conference matchups. Um, we'll see where they, what they can do. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I still think it's Ohio state, especially on the East. Yep. Um, on the West, the Western side of the, of the conference, it's a little more wide open. I think yeah. if you ask me, um, I do think there probably is a favorite. I think the favorite is probably Wisconsin. Yep. Um, but I wouldn't look past an Iowa or maybe even a Minnesota. I, yep. It wouldn't shock me. Um, I, I, as I said, I still kind of lead towards Wisconsin in this in this situation. But I don't know those other two. It's not it's not nearly as wide open as as what the East is. Yeah, for sure. I think there's one, two, three. I think there's three that could definitely win it. And then, yeah, there, there's three, I think. Uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Iowa could could definitely win the West. Um, but I agree that, that Wisconsin's probably the favorite heading in. Um, they got a lot of return – a lot returning. Um, <clears throat> Northwestern won it last year, and they have, like, nothing returning. So uh, I don't think we're going to see a Northwestern repeat in Indianapolis. Um I think it all kind of depends on one or two people for Wisconsin if they can if they can um, bounce back because they they went four and three last year they did they didn't have a great year last year either so um, so yeah but I think it goes through Madison as of now if you were asking me what you are asking me right now I think it's uh, Wisconsin on the on the west but it, it's definitely a lot more wide open yeah uh, we're not gonna dwell on it too much but just where do you see Illinois finishing in the standings? So I I did some pretty extensive research last night. I think one, two, three, four. I got them fifth in the West um, ahead of Purdue and Northwestern. Okay. I was just genuinely curious last night and today I did a little research just to see where some pundits had them. I went through a few yeah. people. Nobody had them higher than last. Yeah, in the I think everyone's got them last, and I, just, I, I don't get it. I don't know. Um, I think they're better than that, but I don't know that they're that much better than that. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I could see, I could see a fifth or a sixth. A seventh would shock me, but I could see a fifth or a sixth place finish for the for the Illini in the Big Ten. Okay, so uh, we we kind of set the table that Ohio State is the runaway favorite in the conference. And we at least know uh, there's a couple teams in contention on the Western side of the conference. Um, but how do you see um, the conference as a whole kind of shaking out? You have uh, some predictions as to where teams are going to fall. What do you think? Yeah. I remember a couple of weeks ago when you were really excited about the conference realignment episode. Yes. This is my conference realignment. This episode. is your conference realignment. I, All right. I went deep into research last night and some today during some breaks and stuff. So I've got notes and I've got some 
predictions that we all know are going to be incorrect. Okay, well, let's hear it. I'm, <laughs> I'm here for this. The table, the floor is all yours, Craig. Let's hear it. You want the East or the West first? Um, let's start with the East. I think it's the less fun. Less anti or less climactic. Sure. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so we know how that division is going to shake out. Yeah. I mean, Ohio State's going to win it. Going to win the East. Um, and in my notes, I've got Ohio State. And then the first bullet point, they're Ohio State. So <laughs> that's, that's about all you need to know. I got that. Um, that's all I, you need to know. I do see Penn State right behind them. Um, they've got six returning on offense or seven returning on offense, six on defense. Um, Clifford, uh, starting quarterback, will be back this year, and all of their wide receivers are back with him. Um, and then a, a lot of their linebackers and defensive back core is back as well. Um, schedule, I didn't see anything too crazy. They do have a big matchup against Auburn on September 18th. That's their one non-conference game that, that people are kind of circling. So that could be a good one, but I do see them uh, coming in second in the East. Um and then I have Indiana third ahead of Michigan. Um, Indiana does return quite a bit, uh, eight on offense, six on defense. But the big one is Michael Penix Jr. Remember the quarterback from last year having a really, really good season. He had that stretch at the pylon, I think, in overtime at Indiana to beat Penn State last year, keep him undefeated. Then he tore his ACL either the next week or the week after. And um, – and they weren't – I mean, they were still good, but um, having him back is huge for them. Uh, they do lose their running back, Stevie something, some, Stevie something, Stevie Smith maybe. Um, he was good, but um, they do lose him. They have a matchup the same day as that Auburn-Penn State game against Cincinnati, and that could be a top 15 game because Cincinnati, I think the rankings came out today, which we can get to in a little bit, but I think their top – they might, I don't think they're top 10. I didn't even get a chance to go through them, but uh, definitely could be a top 15 matchup there week three of the season. And like I said, I got Michigan behind them. Um, there's a lot of questions with Michigan this year, um, as with any year, honestly. There's a lot of questions with Michigan. But I, every year it's just, is Jim Harbaugh the guy? Like on paper, he seems like the perfect guy for that job, but the results just aren't coming. Um, they've only got a couple returning starters from last year on offense. They do have a lot on defense coming back, but their defensive coordinator for, he was there a long time, forgot his name. He retired Don Brown, maybe, um, he retired. So they got a new defensive coordinator, but does have a lot of experience to work with only one skill player returns on offense. They lost their quarterback. They don't, they got a freshman coming in JJ McCarthy, I think who's from the Chicago area. Um, but transferred to, I think, IMG somewhere in Florida for his senior year. Um, so they got him coming in. Do they start a true freshman at quarterback at Michigan? I don't know that you do that. Um, so a lot of questions with Michigan. So I, I got him coming in fourth. And then the last three are kind of whatever, Maryland um, and fifth. Um, uh, 12, 13 returners, returning starters for them. You got two his younger brother, Tagovailoa, coming back at quarterback, and a, a lot of receivers coming back, a lot of skill players coming back. Um, Mike Loxley, um, he did really good at Alabama, but he hasn't been able to translate to a head coaching job um, at Maryland yet. So I, I think they're about a 500 team, maybe a five and seven team. And then Michigan State and Rutgers are, are in the cellar in the East. Uh, Michigan State's they're struggling. Um, D'Antonio left. Um, and it just, it hasn't been the same Mel Tucker. I think he's, he's got some momentum, but he needs a couple more years if he wants to build anything. And then Rutgers, they're Rutgers. Shiano's, I think not going to have them in the cellar as much. I don't know that they'll be in the cellar for much longer. Um, I think they could be like a Maryland type or Indiana type here in a couple of years, but I just don't think they have it yet. So I see the East shaking out as Ohio state, Penn state, Indiana, Michigan, Maryland, Michigan State, and Rutgers. You know, I've been trying to, while you've been sitting there talking, I've been trying to think, you know, is there a realistic chance that somebody trips up Ohio State? Yeah. I think that that's what that's what that division is going to come down to. And looking at their schedule, 
I, I, I just don't know where it's going to come from. Right. I mean, I think in terms of their conference road games, I mean, they don't play a well, they don't play a single non-conference game on the road. Um, their only conference non-conference game of note is they host Oregon the second week. Yep. Um, which that's going to be a big game for Oregon. Um, but I don't know that it's necessarily uh, a game that Ohio state's going to have circled on their schedule. Yeah. Um, I mean, they go to Minnesota, they go to Rutgers, they go to Indiana. I mean, if, if Indiana beats them at home, I mean, I think there's something to that, but, yeah. and then Nebraska and, and who knows with Michigan, I guess that game can always, go one way or the other, but I don't know. Uh, we, we could eat our words at this point or, you know, at the end of the season, but uh, yeah, I'm with you. I, I just, I just don't see they're going, going, I don't see that division going any other way other than Ohio state. Um, I think I agree with you. I do think Penn state is, is in the second spot there. Um, I, I don't think I'd be surprised if, if Indiana slides in there again, I, I don't think I would. I do think it's going to be different with Penn state being a little better this year. Um, and who knows what you're going to get with Michigan, but yeah. um, they, they were definitely the the Cinderella story last year. And it was a, definitely a topic of controversy um, where their placement was at the end of the season, but um, wouldn't, wouldn't shock me, but uh, either way, I still think that's, that's definitely Ohio state's division to lose. Yeah, I think um, the East is – is, and we're going to say this and then it's going to end up being topsy-turvy, but I think the East is pretty cut and dry. Other than that Michigan-Indiana spot, I think could see those two flip-flopping. Yeah, I agree. But other than that, I think it's pretty laid out. Like almost every yeah. preview that I've read has it the, – that seven except for that Indiana-Michigan battling for 3-4. It, yeah. That's just no, what I it agree. is. It's the other division, though, in the Big Ten that's a yeah. little more interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, the the Eastern Division will forever be the stronger of the two. Yes. Um, historically speaking, um, yes, you're going to have good Wisconsin teams. You're going to have good – you'll have a good Northwestern team, all this other stuff. Um, but uh, there's no Ohio State or Penn State or Michigan on that side of, of the conference. So yeah. uh, going into this season um, – as we talked about earlier, I, I, I do think Wisconsin's probably the favorite on paper, but I don't think it's as cut and dry. Uh, so how are you laying it out? What are you, what are you seeing from that, um, from that side of the conference? I do have Wisconsin winning the West, like we already discussed. And I touched on it when we were talking about it earlier, that it kind of is in the hands of one or two people. And one of those one or two people is Graham Mertz because he came out on fire last year yeah. as a, I think, true freshman. I think maybe redshirt. I don't know. As a freshman, he came out just crushing, crushing the ball, crushing the game. And if he can get back to that, I think that they are going to do really well. Um, I mean, I think I have it written down. I'm pretty sure every team in the West – Yes, six six of the seven teams in the West have their starting quarterback returning. So that's a big factor for all six of those teams because there's some continuity and some experience there. Um, Wisconsin also has their leading rusher back, uh, Jalen Berger, and four of their top five pass catchers, uh, not necessarily receivers, um, but some tight ends because, you know, they, they run the, a lot of tight ends in their offense. Um, and then they also have eight of their 11 defensive starters back. So there's a lot returning for Wisconsin and a lot to like for the Badgers this, this season. Um, they do start uh, – the start of their schedule is pretty tough. Three of their first four games, um, they start the season with Penn State. Then they play Eastern Michigan, so there's one cupcake. But then they go Notre Dame, a game in Chicago, and then Michigan. So three of their first four games, uh, they're going to be put to the test. And two of those are Big Ten games against Penn State and Michigan. So when you start that tough, the back end of your schedule is going to be a little more cupcakey, which they end with uh, Rutgers, Northwestern, Nebraska, and Minnesota. So uh, the tough part is the big, the start of the schedule, um, but I, I still think that they probably go. What do we play? Nine Big Ten games. They probably go. Eight, they might they'll, they'll probably lose one, so they'll probably go eight and one or seven and two in the Big Ten. But I think that's good enough to win it, 
likely. The team that I think could take him out is Minnesota. I have Minnesota coming in second yeah. in the West. Um, they also return their starting quarterback, Tanner Morgan, who might be the best quarterback in the Big Ten. He passed for 1,300 yards last year. Um, and also, I think he ran for a lot, too. I think he's, I think he's mobile. Is he mobile? Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. I don't – yeah. <clears throat> he might not run because they've got Muhammad Ibrahim who ran for more than a thousand yards last year. He ran for 1,076 yards and 15 touchdowns in a eight game season. I don't know if they had any canceled. They probably had some canceled. Yeah. They went three and four. So they played seven games. Um, But that's a hell of a stat line for running back in seven games, more than a thousand yards and 15 touchdowns. So when you got that one, two punch with Morgan and Ibrahim, eight returning starters on offense, four of their five offensive linemen are coming back. They do only have five returning starters on defense. So defense could be a question mark for them. Um, and then I have written down that none of their non-conference games are very tough, which is big for them. Uh, Miami, Ohio at Colorado and Bowling Green. So, yeah, I would, I don't know much about Colorado, but I wouldn't expect them to be a powerhouse. So I would say that they go 3-0 and there. They do start their season with Ohio State. So likely starting the season with a loss – um, but other than that, they've got a game at in, at Iowa, and then they host Wisconsin. They're at Indiana. So the last three games are at Iowa, at Indiana, and Wisconsin. So that's going to be tough for Minnesota, but I trust Tanner Morgan and Muhammad Ibrahim. Um, they lost Rashad Bakeman, but they've got Chris Altman-Bell back. So – I like Minnesota. I could definitely see them knocking off Wisconsin. Yeah. So that's, that's who I think Wisconsin's competition is. Iowa slotting in right there after them. Iowa's Iowa. You're going to get consistency. They have their quarterback back. Um, They're running, their leading rusher running back from last year is back. Um, Pretty favorable schedule. Again, their only real tough game is at Iowa state. Who's a top 10 team. That's on September 11th. So that one's, always going to be a test for them because it's the in-state rivalry. So, but Iowa is what Iowa is. They're going to win eight, nine, 10 games and be in contention in the, um, in the big 10 West. Uh, Iowa is what Illinois wants to be. (laughs) um, Honestly. Uh, Then I have Nebraska uh, just a step ahead of Illinois. Um, They've got Adrian Martinez back who led the team in passing and rushing last year, but they got to find some guys around him because Wandale Robinson, transferred who was their number one playmaker um, transferred to Kentucky uh, I think their running back Diedrich Mills graduated or he left as well so not a lot returning for Nebraska so they could slide as well but this four five six seven in the west is kind of a toss-up um, I just think Nebraska might come out on top of that then I have Illinois and we'll get more in depth with them next week but I mean, you got Peters back. You've got your top six leading rushers back from last year, and you add a rusher and Chase Hayden. Four of their five offensive linemen are back. The questions are on the outside with the wide receivers and the defense. Um, Not sure what you're going to get with the defense. Uh, Jake Hansen coming back was humongous for that linebacking group. They did just get a transfer this week. I think his name's Alec Bryant who's an outside linebacker, but he might not be eligible because he entered the portal after July 1st. Um, He was a transfer from, he was a transfer from Virginia tech who I think committed to Purdue, but something went wrong. And so he left Purdue, I think Um, I'm pretty sure it was Purdue. Um, I just think, I, I think they're better than everyone putting them in seventh in the, Big 10. Um, Now the back end of their schedule is pretty tough. So they they need to get those four or five wins early. Um, The Charlotte game, the, I think it's like UTSA. Is that their Mm -hmm. week two game? Yeah. San Antonio. Um, At Virginia would be huge if they could, if they could pull that one off and then they got to win the first couple of big 10 games uh, after Nebraska, the Rutgers game and the Purdue game. So um, I, I have them fifth in the big 10. I just, I don't understand the, I just think that Bielema knows what he's doing 
and knows what he wants to do. And this team is set up to do what he wants to do, which is run the ball because you got a good offensive line and you got a good stable of running backs. So I I think the offense is going to be productive. Just going to need to stop people. So I don't want to get too much into Illinois because we'll talk about them again next week. So that's where I got them. And then Purdue, I Purdue hasn't really done what I thought they would under Jeff Brom. Uh, He had one good year, I think. His first year was like really good when they beat Ohio State. The um, oh shoot, why can't I think of his name? Oh, the kid from Purdue, Tyler. Was his name Tyler? You remember who I'm talking about? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, uh, yes, Tyler Trent. I think that's right. Yes, I think that's right. Tyler, the yeah. Tyler Trent game where Rondell Moore put the spin cycle on the Ohio state guy. And, and that game was just incredible. Um, but they lost Rondell Moore. They do have quarterbacks back and they got a rusher back, but um, they got David Bell returning on the outside. I just, I don't know. I I, I don't think yeah. Brom has, has fulfilled his potential, I guess what you could say. So, I mean, they could very easily be ahead of Illinois and Nebraska, but I got him in sixth. And then I got Northwestern going from first to worst. Um, I mean, they only return, I think, seven guys total from their starting lineup from last year. They lost their quarterback. They got to figure out who their quarterback is. They did have that running back, and I don't know if you remember, I I kind of blocked out the Northwestern game from Illinois last year because it didn't mean anything. Cam Porter ran for 142 yards on Illinois last year, the last game of the year. Um, He came on strong, and then I think he had 90 more yards in the Big Ten Championship, so – He's a running back with some potential. They don't have any really hard non-conference games. I think their one is against Duke, who's not very good. I just – there's so many questions with them. I, I don't – and I know Pat Fitzgerald's a great head coach, but I just don't see – I don't see a whole lot from Northwestern this year. So, I got them seventh in the in the West. So, I got um, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, Illinois, Purdue, Northwestern. Yeah. I'm with you. Um, I, I do think Wisconsin. We gotta stop agreeing. Team. Well, I mean, yes and no. Um, <laughs> I mean, a lot of it's fairly chalky. I think yeah. personally. Um, yeah. I think I would probably put Iowa as the two um, on that side of the conference, but I think Minnesota has a just as good of a shot to upend Wisconsin. Um, yeah. So that wouldn't shock me. Um, but yeah, other, other than that, I do think it's pretty chalky. I, I don't really know where I see Illinois sitting right now. I agree with you in that, um, you would think that the running game should be enough, but as you talked about, I'm not really sure what you're getting with that defense. Yeah. Um, and with Purdue, I mean, there's who knows, I think there, I think that side could go a number of different ways in terms of the end of the season standings. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't shock me if one of about three teams wins the t- wins the division um so who knows uh, it's definitely um a little more wide open than um what what the eastern side is yeah um so yeah we, we kind of both agreed there on ohio state and wisconsin uh playing at the big 10 championship game uh, i imagine that you're probably on uh team ohio state there that they would probably probably win that in this hypothetical situation and yeah my, and, my head says Ohio State beats Wisconsin. My heart, what I would love to see, would be a Minnesota-Indiana Big Ten championship. Oh, wow. Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be cool. <laughs> uh, it would be fun. It, it honestly would be fun. Yeah. And I don't think the ratings – I don't think uh, Fox would love that. No. Uh, no. For ratings purposes. But, uh, but, yeah, absolutely. If we get to that point, that would be – that would certainly be entertaining. Yeah. Um, real quick, I don't think we want to spend a ton of time on the rest of the of the rest of the country on the rest of the country because I think we're already getting close to our our time. But um, real quick, I do want to go through some of the other conferences and just kind of talk about who we think um, will will reign supreme in those. Uh, we'll start with the SEC. Um, the SEC obviously has been making a lot of headlines the past few weeks with all the conference realignment stuff. Uh, for this year, at least, there will no be, be no Texas or Oklahoma in the SEC. Um, I think it's pretty chalky there. Uh, I think it's probably Alabama, Georgia um, in those two divisions. Um, yeah. I don't really see Alabama having much issue uh, in the West. Um, I think did Florida 
Florida win? Florida won the East last year, right? Yes. Yes. Um, I could certainly see that happening again. Um, but I think Georgia, uh, at least going into the season is, is probably one of the best two or three teams in the country. Um, so I, I mean, I would not be shocked if those two teams see each other twice over the span of the last few weeks of, of the college football season. Um, do you see anybody else out of the sec got a chance there? Georgia, A&M. Georgia and Alabama don't play in the regular season this year. No, but they would play in hypothetical conference championships and then and then final four, uh, final four or championship mm-hmm. game. Um, yeah, I don't know much about Georgia this year. Normally, I've at this point I've heard a lot more about them, um, but I don't know a whole lot. Um, the sleeper, and it's I hate that they're in the West with Alabama because I think if they were in the East, they would win it. Would be Texas A and M. Yeah. I think Texas A&M I agree. Is, is slowly climbing. Um, not going to say they're on Alabama's level just yet, but I think Jimbo's doing a really good job there. Um, yeah. So if if they were on the other side of things, I think it would be Alabama, Texas A&M. Um, but, yeah, I just you, you can't predict against Alabama until no. they're knocked off. So, yeah, I'll go with Alabama, Georgia, SEC. Bama over yeah. Georgia. SEC. Um, I don't. I don't think anyone in the East challenges Georgia. It would be Florida if if it were to be anyone, but I I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see that either. I think that's fairly chalky. I um, think Ole Miss eight, could be good too. Yeah, I think I think they. I mean the the SEC is full of a lot of good football teams, but when it comes down to only two of them are going to play for a conference championship and. One of them's Alabama. <laughs> One of them's Alabama. <laughs> yeah, and the you and know. Texas A and M and Ole Miss are in the West with Alabama, so right. they kind of don't and, have a shot. And eventually, when we get to this point, there will be multiple teams making the playoff, so we can yeah. you know talk about multiple teams making the playoff. But at this point, only four teams make the playoff, yeah. and likely only two of them are going to come from the SEC. So if you know, if 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 that it may just be one. So yeah. uh, in terms of you know just getting to that far in the season. Um, Got to say Alabama and Georgia are the favorites there. Uh, ACC probably looks a little similar to last season. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, except the fact that Notre Dame's not going to be in it yeah. um, like they played in it last year. But uh, Clemson, uh, obviously the team to beat uh, in, in their division. Um, they uh, got beat by Notre Dame last year in South Bend. Um, I just, I looked at their schedule. I don't see them running into much issue there Mm -hmm. uh, or at all really in their season. It's possible, but um, I'm not really sure where it's going to come from the coastal division there. um, North Carolina thinks the favorite, Um, you know, it Sam Howell's an all American quarterback. I just, I think that's probably theirs. Miami might have something to say, um, but I think it's probably Carolina. Yeah, North Carolina football turned into quarterback you. I mean, Mitchell yeah. Trubisky and Sam Howell, two two top five NFL yeah. quarterbacks. Drafted at least. Trubisky's yeah. not a top five NFL quarterback. No. Um, yeah, I don't know a whole lot other than Mac Brown's doing a really good job at North Carolina. Um, top, what are they ranked? Top six, I think. I just had the rankings pulled up. Yeah, I had it up here too. Uh, North Carolina's top oh, 10. Oh, 10th. 10th. Yeah. Um, yeah, 10th. Cincinnati's eight, which I mentioned earlier. So Cincinnati and um, I forgot who they play, but uh, yeah, North Carolina top 10 team preseason um, turned into a football school um, is Miami. Yeah. Miami's 14. So, I mean, I, I could see Miami knocking them off, but Miami's kind of like, I know we touched on Florida state last week about how they just kind of fallen off since Bobby Bowden retired. I mean, Miami hasn't done anything, hasn't made any national noise in, I mean, when was the last time they were a top, five team at the end of the year top 10 team it's been a while it's been a long time so a while so maybe they get back to it but let's roll with mac brown still with the yeah. clemson beaten unc i agree uh just of note clemson does start the season with georgia um on september Ooh. 4th week one um so that'll be a a uh, very telling game for both of those two teams yeah I like likely that. good chance that both of them are playing in the playoff um come the end of the season but uh, they will meet um, to start the season on September 4th. Are you mad I didn't um, pick Louisville? No. No, I don't know why you would pick Louisville. <laughs> you asked me that question today. Go ahead, and pre- go ahead and ask that question to the audience. Your question you sent to me. Oh. About. Yeah, so I was listening to ESPN Radio today, this morning, 
and a couple of the guys were debating whether or not, or basically debating which the better college football program is Louisville or Oklahoma state. And I was like, this isn't even close. Like, what are they talking about? But they all not, I mean, there were, I think it was a three man show and two of them thought Louisville was in a better spot than Oklahoma state. Well, I I mean, I don't think so on paper um, right now. They might be, they are more of an up and coming program. They are in a more secure situation conference wise. Um, I mean, that's true. Yeah. I mean, there's, there are certainly factors. I mean, historically speaking, yeah, I would say Oklahoma state, yeah. Um, but I mean, the past however many years, Oklahoma state's been lacking in football. Um, so I don't know. I think it's, I do think it's an interesting question, but I, I don't know why I wouldn't pick Oklahoma state, but I think, I think Louisville can make an argument. Um, speaking of Oklahoma state, we'll move to the big 12. Um, who knows how many seasons, huh? Yeah. Well, who knows how, I don't know for how long, <laughs> but at least for this year, there's still going to be a conference. Um, I think there's a clear one and two in this conference as well. Yep. I don't think we really need to argue about it too much. I think it's Oklahoma and Iowa state. Now last year, Oklahoma did struggle out of the gate. Yeah. Um, they lost a pair of back-to-back games. One of them to Iowa state. Uh, yeah. They also lost to a very bad Kansas state team. Um, I, I mean, Oklahoma state or sorry, Oklahoma um, entered. At, I saw the AP poll. I think they were like second. Um, so obviously people are still high on the Sooners. Yeah. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't be, um, but Iowa state is, is definitely a, a program on the, on the rise and they've had a strong last few years. Yeah. Um, they're, they're going to be, they're not going to be somebody to, to roll over at this point. I mean, I, I don't know that I see a scenario that Iowa state makes the playoff um, unless they just, I, I mean, they obviously have to win run the table in the conference, I would think. Yeah. I think both those teams would have to run the table in the conference. Yeah. Um I don't I don't know that there's a one loss scenario necessarily for either of them at this point. Um I'm not sure that conference yeah. has enough yeah. going for it outside of those two to make a case for it. Um but I mean clearly Oklahoma's is good enough to be number two in the AP poll to start the season. So do you think there's anybody outside of those two that has a shot at that? Or is it no. pretty much just a two man race? No, I, one of those two teams are going to win the conference. Now they do have a conference championship now, right? They don't have two divisions. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure so. they have a conference championship. I, I the think top they two do. Finishers. I, I don't remember. I can't keep up with all the stuff. They change this stuff yeah. all the time. Um, I, I, I like Oklahoma. Um, I like them to make the college football playoff, honestly. Um, just be just for that reason that, if they beat Ohio state, I don't see anyone else that's going to beat them. Uh, let me see yeah. if I can get their non-conference schedule up here. Oklahoma. I have Oklahoma's schedule. Um, it's not exactly Nebraska? scary. <laughs> yeah. Nebraska is the only tough and they're not even tough. Non-conference. They, game. Yeah. They, they, they host Nebraska. Maybe that's why <laughs> maybe they've learned. I just, that I mean, sh- they have to go undefeated to make the college. Yeah. Football, I so. mean, they, they can certainly stumble against somebody. They did it last year. So that's certainly not out of the question, but yeah, their in terms of their schedule, they they're going to have to win out. Uh, they're going to have to go run the table in the conference, win their conference championship game, which I think is certainly all uh, a possibility. I think if um, they lose to Ohio state regular season, but then those two play in the conference championship and they win the conference championship, and, Ohio, and Iowa State. Did I say Ohio State? I meant to you say did. Iowa State. I meant to say Iowa State. If they lose to Iowa State in the regular season, but beat them in the conference championship, I th- and and Iowa State has a good regular season. I, I think Oklahoma could still get in with one loss. Yeah, it's very possible. Um, we'll have to see how that shakes out. But either way, I think that's a that's a two man race for sure. Yeah. Uh, Pac twelve. Um, not a conference we talk a lot about, especially on this show. Um, last year they played a very, very, um, small schedule, uh, due to COVID, um, Oregon, uh, in the North. And I have, I say USC in the South. I don't know if they're necessarily the favorite. Um, but I, I think, I don't know. I just, something tells me USC might be, might be a team to, a team to go for. I said the Um, same thing. (laughs) Will you just stop doing that? <laughs> I'll say I'll say Arizona State. I wasn't going to say Arizona State because I don't know why, but I don't have confidence in Herm Edwards. 
as a college coach, kind of yeah. the same with, I guess, Lovey just kind of turned me off of that. Yeah. But, um, but I went with Ohio State, but I could definitely see Arizona State looking at the, the preview magazine I got here. They've got a lot returning, like a lot returning for Herm Edwards this year. So I could definitely see yeah. them, see them winning the South. But yeah, um, I think it's a two horse. Uh, maybe I don't know. Utah's Utah's ranked preseason, so they they might yeah. pull something off. I really hope oh. Chip Kelly turns UCLA into like what he had Oregon, because yeah. that would be really That'd be cool. Fun. That'd but be fun. I don't know. I don't know that he's. Going um, to. I think people have caught up to him. Yeah, Oregon. I mentioned earlier, Oregon does go to Columbus and plays Ohio State um, early in the season. So if Oregon's able to do that and pull off an upset, and then win out maybe in the in the Pac-12 there might be yeah. a route for them uh in the playoff but I think the Pac-12s mm-hmm. can have a long a long road yeah um to get to one of those four spots yeah uh lastly um we'll kind of touch on some of the ind- like independence and group of five stuff uh Notre yeah. Dame obviously always in the mix excuse me um they don't pretend I they don't exactly have a, a super tough schedule this year I don't think yeah. they don't have a Clemson on their schedule like they did last year um they do host Cincinnati which will be, you know, a big matchup for both those teams. I mean, that's that's really about, about their premier non, I guess, and on the conference schedule. But um, I mean, they have they have Wisconsin, North Carolina, Cincinnati, and USC. I mean, yeah. those are their four biggest matchups. Neither none of those scream this will get me into the national championship game type performance. But um, you know, they're they're definitely not going to be a pushover. Um, they don't have a conference to play in, so we don't really have anything to compare them against. But they did at least um, play for the ACC conference championship last year when they were a part of that um, group of five. You have any? And we've kind of mentioned Cincinnati a time or two. I'm sure yeah. they're probably the team you think has. I don't know that they have a shot to play in the playoff, but um, they're probably the the best of the of the rest of them. I would yeah. say. I love Cincinnati. I love Cincinnati. I love their program. I love Luke Fickle. Um, as you know, I don't think we had this show when we did not have this show yet when Illinois hired Bielma. I wanted Luke Fickle so bad. Yes, you um, did. So, so bad. And was it realistic? No, he's not going to leave Cincinnati for Illinois. But um, I think he's a great coach. I don't know how much longer he's going to be at Cincinnati um, unless Cincinnati makes a jump to a Power 5 conference, which – Give him, give him, come on, come on, come on into the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah. Well, we I can talk about that. Uh, we do have a couple things I want to talk about realignment purposes. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, Cincinnati, I think is probably the the they've group got five. Indi- they jour. play at Indiana at no- and at Notre Dame. Yeah. So they've got back a couple to, good. Well, games not back, back to back. back. They have a week off between, but oh yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, there's two two weekends on their schedule in a row at least. Yeah. Um, so those will be a couple of good games for them uh, outside of Cincinnati. I think UCF bounces back. They weren't as strong last year, but I think that's, they're probably the other one to, to look at. Um, and both of those teams play each other in October. Um, so coastal Carolina, um, coastal Carolina. Yeah. They were, they were a fun, a fun surprise last year too. They could certainly be in the mix for that. Again, the group of five stuff, we talk about it. I mean, yes, they're, you know, they can be fun to watch. They can spoil something, but they're probably not going to play in a playoff game. They're not making um, a playoff until, game until there's expansion. Yeah, exactly. So we're not going to dwell on that too much. Uh, real quickly, you want to predict who you think makes the college football playoff? Yeah, I got uh, in order one, two, three, four. I got Clemson, Oklahoma, Alabama, Ohio State. Clemson, Oklahoma, Alabama, Ohio State. Okay. I went Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, Ohio State. So you have, a, you have okay. Oklahoma and I have Georgia. Yeah, I think Oklahoma is uh, going to run the table and – I, I think yeah, their game against Ohio State might be fairly close, but other than that, I don't think they're going to be challenged unless they play awful. So you said Ohio, you said Ohio State again. You mean Jeez. Iowa State? Yeah, I don't Iowa think State. Oklahoma's going to Columbus this year. <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's certainly there's certainly in the mix for that as well. I mean, I think there's a shot. I mean, I think it's really about maybe eight teams that realistically could get into this thing. Um, I mean, there might be an avenue yeah. for for a Florida or an A and M. I got AM, um, Oregon, UNC. Notre Dame, Oregon. I mean, I think there's a few teams that could, but um, yeah. I think my, realistically it's probably about five or six. My first four out or teams that I thought might crack it are AM, Oregon, UNC, and maybe Cincinnati. If they beat Indiana 
and that would be other? something if they beat Notre Indiana Dame. and Notre Dame and, and those UCF. two F and UCF and those two teams go on and like only lose those games and are really, really good. And they crush and, and Cincinnati crushes everyone else. Maybe, maybe, but I don't think it's going to happen. I would love it. It's, it's a long like shot. Kind of like my Minnesota shot. Indiana big 10 championship, but I just, I don't know sure. why. And I don't know where it came from, but I have a fondness for Cincinnati Bearcats. I don't know why. I think it I, started. I don't know where that would have came from. Either. It might have started um, with the college basketball video game, like NCAA basketball 2000 or 1999. Like I played as them once, and I liked their the Kenyon, Kenyon Martin fan. Kenyon or? Martin, yeah, I, I liked their logo because it was a C. Because my name was Craig, and it started with a C. So. Wow. <laughs> I don't okay. know. I've, I've always had the fondness for Cincinnati and I don't know. Why. Okay. Well, that's fair. So. That's fair. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, you know, we've, we've kind of talked about um, the, the college football landscape this year. We've talked about the realignment stuff. We'll talk about more in-depth Illinois stuff next week. Um, but there was some interesting news last week or towards the end of last week um, about this, all this realignment stuff oh. Um that there's some sort of an alliance forming here. We talk about alliances, you know, on big brother, um, some <laughs> yeah. sort of an alliance forming um, between the big 10, the ACC and the PAC 12. Now this was reported by the athletic last week. They didn't really have a lot of information as to what this means. It's not really been stated if this is just some sort of financial thing, or if this is part of what they've talked about is that it has to do with um, votes when it comes to uh, the playoff expansion yeah. and different things like that. Um, yeah. But it could also very well mean some sort of scheduling alliance. And I was reading a lot more on that today. Again, this isn't necessarily anything confirmed. A lot of this is still some speculation, but there is some sort of confirmation that there's something brewing between these three conferences, which to me basically signals that the big 12 is just going to be done. I, I just don't know unless they, some of these conferences still scoop up some of these big 12 schools, but it doesn't really seem like that's something they want to do, um, which I can kind of see both sides of that. Um, personally, I don't know why the big 10 wouldn't want to add Kansas and Iowa state. I think it makes sense for them, um, but whatever, that's not what we're here to debate. We're here to talk about, yeah. um, but this Alliance thing, um, I, I think it, I mean, I do think it makes some sense to add some, just to add some big, big matchups to the schedule. Um, yeah. I don't know if you did, I don't know if you read the story on the athletic today, but they were talking about the $4 million, the 4 million club. And basically it's these, all the football, college football games that reach 4 million viewers essentially is what it comes down to. And the number of games, um, every year that play in those and, and what schools they are, what conferences they're in. So basically this alliance that they're talking about, you know, you would still have your conference schedule. The big 10 would still play, you know, X amount of big 10 games. Um, but they would also ha- be guaranteed to play a big 12 or a pac 12 or in an ACC school, something along those lines. So you'll have more opportunities to play these 4 million club games yeah. You know, like you're like the SEC is doing now Now that they add Texas and Oklahoma. So many more of these games are going to happen. You know, not not just Texas and Oklahoma, but Texas playing Alabama and Oklahoma playing A&M and like all this stuff that these are going to be big time matchups for TV purposes. Now, the same thing can be can be done here. So, yeah. again, we don't know a lot about it, um, but I, it doesn't shock me that something like this is happening now with all this aligning. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Some stability because I don't. I don't want these. I, I'm against these super conferences. Like I don't I like too. what the SEC is doing. Like I understand I it, but what's it, it's going to be a 16 team conference, 17 if you count I, I Notre Dame and basketball. It's it's insanity. Like I, I don't I don't know. I'm 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 against that, so I'm okay with this because, like yeah. you said, if if these three conferences, Big Ten, ACC, and Pac-12 form this alliance and every year Illinois plays one pack 12 school, one ACC school, and then your big 10 schedule. I am totally okay with that. I'm yeah. 100% okay with that because you're playing yeah. different teams uh, all the time and it, it yeah. could be easy scheduling. I mean, it, I, I'm, I'm all on board. I'm all, yeah. all for it because I didn't want the, I didn't want the big 10 pack 12 merger thing to happen just cause it's like, it's too, too much, yeah. too much. So I'm all for this. 
Oh, I agree. I, again, we don't really know a ton about it, um, but that was just kind of something that was scooped a little bit last week. So we thought it was at least worth mentioning since we were going to talk about more college football stuff this week anyway. So something to keep an eye on um, as we move forward uh, with all this realigning stuff. Um, let's talk a little bit, bit of basketball. Um, Iota Sumu, he is finally had a little bit of a coming out party and he was rewarded with a, a two year guaranteed contract. Yeah. And, uh, and some, some, some cash money. Uh, I think it was a two year deal for about two and a half million dollars that oh, IO signed with the bulls. Yep. And then he put up 26 points. Was that last night or two last nights night. ago? Yeah. Sunday 26 night. points, like seven yeah. boards and a few assists. Yeah. Uh, having a little bit, it took, it took a little bit for him to get started, um, yeah. in, in summer league. Um, but, uh, kind of really showed what he's got. Um, that's, it's really exciting to see. Cause I, I think when the bulls drafted him, I thought, Oh, for sure. Like they're, he'll, he'll sign a contract and he'll be a part of this team. And then they started making all these moves and bringing in these other free agents, other guards. And I'm thinking like, okay, like he's definitely sliding down lower and lower on the list here. Yeah. Um, but it, it's good to see that that's I'm yeah. happy for him um, that, you know, he's able to, you know, sign that contract with, with his hometown mm-hmm. team and yeah. um, hopefully play an impact on, on what's going to be a, a really exciting team to watch. I think in Chicago this year. Yeah. When they drafted him, obviously before all the moves, I was like, okay, he'll, he'll play 15 minutes a game, maybe 20 minutes a game, you know, get, get his feet wet a little bit. Um, probably score five or six points a game, whatever. Like he'll, he'll be a role player. And then they trade for Lonzo Ball, and then they trade for Alex Caruso, and they trade for DeMar DeRozan. I'm like, okay, I owe my play five minutes a game. (laughs) Excuse me, which kind of got me worried that he might not get the guaranteed deal, might get like a two-way contract where he'll play a lot in the G League to get some experience. Um, So I was a little worried, but happy for him. He got the two years guaranteed, Um, (coughs) 2.48. Jeez, excuse me. Um, but yeah, I watched the first half last night cause it was like a 10 PM Eastern tip off or something like that. I um, watched the first half. He had 13 points, three rebounds, three assists. All three assists were just magnificent off pick and rolls. Uh, well, one was a fast break. No look. It was sweet. Like he was at half court and he one bounce past it to the lane to the big guy who dunked it. The other two were off pick and rolls. Didn't quite nutmeg the defender but kind of went just to the – just, like, in between their legs, uh, the two different players' legs, um, which it was good to see because he needed to have a big game last night because Patrick Williams didn't play and uh, DeMar Dotson uh, didn't play, who was their starting point guard for the first three games of Summer League. They drafted him last year, I think I think Kansas. I think he played at Kansas. So uh, it was good to see Io take advantage of the opportunity, and, and he definitely did. He had a, he had a couple mid-range – jumpers which we know so well from his time at illinois and he i know he knocked down one maybe two threes i saw one in the first half but but yeah it was good to see it was good to see yeah for sure um as we said wasn't really sure what was going to happen there with the bulls but i'm happy for io um to be able to get that shot and know that he's got a spot there on that roster for a little while despite all the changes that they're that they're going through so summer league stuff uh I think they have one more game. I think he has one more game. They have the playoff, playoff but the Bulls are one and three, so I don't think they're going to make the playoff. So I think – and it might be Tuesday night. I'm not exactly sure. So he might be done by the time. um, Okay. Or it might might be tonight, sorry. It might be Monday night. So I'm not sure. Either way, um, we're we're just happy for Io that he's getting a chance to do that. So um, Craig. Well, I had another question real quick. You brought up a point during the IO stuff. How are you liking East Coast time? Hate it. Yeah, already? <laughs> I hate it, yeah. yeah. You haven't even gotten to, like, major sporting season yet. I know. I mean, I obviously, hate, baseball's like, going on, but. I am so dreading maybe, like, next summer, because I don't care about the Cardinals really anymore this year. Like, when they go on their West Coast trips, I am I, I, I'm going to hate it so much. Um, just wait for those nine o'clock college football championship kickoffs on a Monday night. Oh, yeah. Those are the best. Yeah. Yeah. Those I, are I, the best. I was, so I've been, went to Phoenix in fall of 2019 and went to Vegas in the winter of 2020. So I was on Western, not Western, Pacific time. No. 
yeah pacific Paci- yeah. pacific time and i was like oh my god this is awesome like give me pacific time every day of the week and now i'm three hours off of that yeah we went we Eastern. went the, we went the other way Eastern it was, time zone was um, awful. <laughs> so we were in vegas for my birthday in 2020 right before covid hit like i remember christy asked me as we were in an airport in chicago going to vegas she was like have you heard about this coronavirus i was like coronavirus like do you get it from drinking beer i was like what it's like what the heck is that and then two months later the world shuts down so we just got our vegas trip in but it was for my birthday my 30th and it was the illinois at michigan basketball game where io hit the dagger in the lane and i was at the sports book at 8 30 in the morning because the game tipped off at nine in the morning western or uh pacific time it was awesome (laughs) yeah yeah uh anyway east coast time zone sucks i was curious your thoughts since you entered into uh my world um all right so well you put it on the rundown you mentioned at the top of the show it sounds like you watched a movie and we both watched a couple we both watched a movie this weekend that we're going to talk about but i does i don't think they're the same movie because no i had to go to a theater to see mine and i don't believe you've gone to a theater to see this one so no uh, I want to start with you. I want to know what movie you watched and let, let's hear about it. I, I kind of want to, I, I want you to guess if you've ever you heard of it. Guess what movie you watched? How am I supposed to know? So it stars. You watched Simon Birch. No, it stars Freddie Highmore. I don't even know who Freddie Highmore is. Uh, he's Charlie Bucket in the Johnny Depp adaptation. <laughs> of, and then he's in Bates okay. Motel and The Good Doctor. Okay um who so else is in this movie if you just google the movie um hold on i just had it liam cunningham sam riley and then that's the only one names that i know or face i watch knew. a lot of movies and i don't even hardly recognize any of those names so okay, i don't so know what movie you watched when an engineer learns of a mysterious impenetrable fortress hidden under the bank of spain he joins the crew of master thieves who plan to steal the legendary lost treasure while the whole country watches the world cup the title of I the don't... movie is called the vault or never even heard of this. also known as way down in certain regions i gotta look it up i want to hear about <laughs> it though let's let's so, where did this come from where did you watch this uh netflix it's on netflix okay okay so i forgot what night it was do you remember what night i text i, I don't know i, I didn't, didn't i guess i didn't text I you because you... i wanted to talk about it here um we watched it friday or saturday night um or it might have been thursday night because christy goes to bed early so this friday just came out came out in march of 2021 oh, yeah, a couple months ago didn't know anything about it okay um so freddie highmore plays the main character who is an engineer and he has these interviews with a bunch of these huge oil companies which is where his family's money came from because of his dad and he he turns all of them down like he he's considered like this like the prodigy the smartest engineer that these oil companies are trying to get in the world so everyone's trying to get him and he basically calls them all stupid he's like i don't want to do this whatever and then uh, Liam Cunningham, who is, uh, did you watch Game of Thrones? I did. Who is Sir Davos. And so that's Game why you wanted to start watching Game of Thrones again. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, I saw got him. It. Okay. Um, I do know who he is, at least. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, so he connects with him and tells him about this plan to, who, who Liam Cunningham's character is um, a treasure hunter, tells him about this plan to get this treasure back that he originally found that the country of Spain took because he didn't get permission to dive over or in their waters to get this treasure. But the treasure is in the most secure, most guarded, hardest to break into vault in the world under the bank of Spain. Okay. So they want, okay. They want um, at Freddie Highmore's character to, cause he's an engineer to figure out how this vault works so they can break in to the bank um and it, i mean it was it was good it, it kept me entertained um I, I really liked it i like the premise i like those kind of movies that are like kind of make you think and then like at the end you're like oh that makes sense and, and all that stuff yeah. so i was entertained i really liked it 
Okay. I, I figured that you had not seen it or heard about it. But... No, I hadn't seen it or heard about it. And I mean, I I hear of at least a lot of movies, and I didn't it was know one of those that we were just. I was scrolling through Netflix trying to find something, and I uh, watch. We watched, you know, when you when you stop on it, the trailer starts yeah. playing, and it started playing. I was like, "Ooh, this is right up my alley." Um, okay. It fit. Yeah, it was okay. good. It was good. All right. That's that's great. I'll I'll have to add it onto my list. My list is already way too long <laughs> um, for 2021, but I will definitely look into that one. I didn't know anything about it. Um, did you did you give it a score? Where where are we at? Um, did we star this movie? What do you want it on? You want it on our normal five? Whatever star you scale? want, Craig. This is your show. Um, what did I give Space Jam? Do you remember? No, I don't. I hadn't thought about it yet. I'll say like a 66 out of a hundred. 66 out of a hundred. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good to, good to know. That's wonderful. It, could, really probably, it could probably be higher. I really enjoyed it. It's okay. not the best movie, but I like, are we going by movie standards or how much I liked it? You know? Hey, uh, whatever you want it to be, man. So we'll whatever six, you want it to six, be. We'll go 66. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Um, I also watched a new movie over the weekend. Uh, I went to the theater on Thursday night to saw free guy, oh, which is yeah. the new Ryan Reynolds movie, um, that just dropped this week. A um, little bit of a background on this movie. If you're not familiar with it, uh, it is a, it's, it's a, it's a video game movie type of situation, um, which historically speaking, those aren't very good. Um, but this one, this one was good. I, I will say, and it's getting a lot of positive praise. Um, essentially, Ryan Reynolds' character is as a non-playable character inside this world, like kind of like a Grand Theft Auto type of world. Um, and he runs into um, this this character in the game, and hijinks ensue. Essentially, that's kind of what happens here. Um, as I said, it is a video game type of movie. Um, has parts that take place inside the game, also parts that take place outside of the game. Um, it is a so the story here is that this was in production um, with Fox prior to them getting bought out by Disney mm. a few years ago. And when Disney was slashing projects right and left, the Fox was doing this was one of the ones that they kept. Um, they liked they liked what they had with this movie so far at that point, and they they decided to let them go with it. Um, it was supposed to be released last year, last July, um, but just like most movies got pushed back. Um, the controversy was that this one didn't get a split release like a lot of the other Disney movies have gotten, um, like Black Widow and Jungle Cruise and Cruella before it um, that got theatrical and Disney Plus premiere access. This did not. Um, they put this one in the theaters and the theaters alone. Um, and we'll see how it paid off for them uh, in terms of box office wise. But it was it was really solid. It was really good. I was really I was impressed um, and a little surprised with it, to be honest. I love Ryan Reynolds, um, you know, but I he doesn't always make the best choices when it comes to his movies. Um, he's kind of re, restarted his career with Deadpool. Yeah. Um, but this this movie's just a lot of fun. It's just a it's just a fun time. Um, just a fun time with the movies. And it's just, it's a, it's a good story. Uh, Jodie Comer um, kind of has like a dual role. I'm not super familiar with Jodie Comer, but she's, her big role was on Killing Eve, which is the TV series. Um, she kind of has a dual role playing both her character outside, like the, in the main, in the real world. And then as well in the game, um, she's great in it as well. Uh, Joe Keery from Stranger Things. I don't know if you're oh, familiar, yeah. you watch Stranger Things. He's also yeah. in the movie. Um uh, Taika Waititi is also in it. He's not my favorite part of the movie. He kind of plays the villain. Um, mm. He's not great, but he's a little over the top. Um, either way, Free Guy is a really fun movie. I, I could not recommend it more um, to people uh, right now. It is it is only in theaters. Um, there's there's no plan to bring that to anywhere else until it's until it's ready. So um, if you want to see that right now, it's going to be in the theaters. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait till that's on on demand or on a streaming service or on Blu-ray or whatever you want to do. Um, you're going to ask me what I scored it, and I don't remember, but it scored pretty high for me. Um, as of right now, and these numbers kind of tend to change over time, um, I have it as four stars. Um, 
an 84 and a half is, is this is the numerical score got for me. Um, it was just really fun. And the ending, there's some things happen, some, some funny moments in the, at the end that really made me laugh. Um, the movie itself as a whole, I mean, it's a funny movie. So, I mean, I laughed quite a bit, but they, they were able to do some things due to uh, Fox now being owned by Disney that yeah. uh, definitely uh, provided a laugh for, for the audience towards the end. So um, it's definitely worth a watch. And it was a fun movie to watch on the big screen. I will say that too. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of movies that are fine to watch at home, um, but there are other movies that are, that are really made for the big screen. I think free guy is really a movie that's made for the big screen. So, so let me ask you this. When yeah. You've gone, you've gone to the theater a lot lately. How are the crowds at the theaters? Are you sitting next to people? Um, only Black Widow. Okay. I think Black Widow was the only time that I've been to a theater recently. Uh, no, Suicide Squad. When I see, well, the other thing too is I'm, I mean, I'm usually going to these movies on opening night. Yeah. So opening night, yes. Like had I, if I wait a week or two, yeah, I can probably go and not sit by anybody. Um, but I've been going and yes, at this point they are, they're at full capacity. At least they are here. Uh, and the, I know that everywhere has different rules. Now I know bigger cities are now requiring, you know, proof of vaccination before you go into the theater and all this yeah. stuff. Indiana is not to that point yet. I'm not sure Indiana will get to that point. Um, only a couple of times though, have I had to sit by somebody yeah. most of the time. Um, like when I went to saw free guy, I was by myself. So um it just kind of depends on the movie yeah. and the time and all that stuff. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I have been, I've still been, I've been going to theater um, basically this whole time. I mean, once they started doing those again, um, last Christmas time ish, I was still going, not a ton. I mean, I'm not going there as much as I used to, but I'm still going because I'd rather do that than pay $30 to watch these movies at home. Right. Um, when it's just the two of us or maybe even just me. So, so yeah, um, that's that's free guy. Um, looking ahead, um, I mean the big thing right now is some movies are are getting pushed back again, um, and I'm a little hesitant about what's going to happen. I saw Venom, Venom got pushed back uh, to October, closer to Halloween. Um, Shane Chi is is Disney's next big release, the next Marvel movie that's supposed to come out here in a couple weeks. It's not been pushed back yet, and they're they're holding still that that's going to be just theatrical. Um, it's not going to have a, a dual release like Black Widow did. Um, so they're standing to that right now. We'll see if that still happens. If, if this Delta variant continues to, to grow and take things over. Um, but that's kind of where we are right now. A um, couple other movies that are coming out soon that I'm excited about, but um, we're kind of, we're going to kind of slow down, I think now for the next few months. So um big brother did you were you watching big brother this week i know we talk about that usually on this show you caught up yeah that's part of what i was doing on thursday night while i wasn't able to get to all of well it was, i went to saw free guy and then i was watching big brother and then by the time big brother was over i started the baseball game but then it was like 11 o'clock it was like the third inning and that's why i didn't finish it so um thursday we had a live eviction yeah. and uh that was christian out the door um, Derek X is, I thought personally, I thought Derek X made the right decision to put up Christian. Yeah. I thought he was a little bit early to do yeah. it, Yeah. but you don't know that you're going to get that chance again. Yeah. Um, I don't love that. He told Alyssa right before right. nominations that he was going to do it or right. the veto ceremony that he was going to do it. Now I haven't been really been keeping up with everything that's going on. Um, in terms of the live feeds and stuff. So there might be more to that story than what we saw, mm -hmm. but like the edit just made it look like he just wanted to tell her. So I don't know that I love that decision. Um, but as we know right now in the house, it hasn't really heard him yet. So yeah. Um, Alyssa didn't win HOH. Um, Kylan ended up winning the following HOH. That's where we stand right now. Mm -hmm. um, they've now unleashed this new twist. Yeah. Um, with this high rollers room, um, they had the, the America could vote for uh, to give house guests um, money essentially to gamble. Now, I was a little surprised by the by the outcome of that, by the who got what the money in terms of like the top three. The top three yeah. vote getters got one hundred dollars. The yeah. second three got seventy five. Everybody else got fifty. Yeah, I figured Derek X would be in that list at the top three. Yeah, I was I was surprised by Brittany, and I was really surprised by Derek F. 
um, yeah. in terms of the three that got got the votes from America. Uh, yeah. Do you feel the same way? Were you shocked a little bit? Um, I'm not shocked by Brittany because I think America probably feels for her yeah. after what she's gone I, through. I voted for Brittany. I won't, uh, <laughs> I, won't lie. I won't lie about it. She got my vote. Um, I like Derek F. He just doesn't do anything. Yeah. He just a- hasn't made any moves. I think he's a great guy, great person. Yeah. Um, I would love to be friends with him, um, but he just hasn't done anything to make a huge impression. Um, and who was the third one? Who got the, Derek uh, X? Derek X. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, I, I like, I like both Derek's a lot. Yeah. Um, when he, when Derek X initially said that Christian was his target, I'm with you. I was like, what are you doing, dude? Like you got a good alliance with this Royal flush, right? Roll with it. Like get someone else out. But, um, and also I thought that by getting Christian out, it puts a bigger target on his back. Um, but that it doesn't seem, it hasn't seemed to it because yeah. I think probably once he did it, the rest of the house was like, Oh good. Now I don't have to do it. Yeah. So he did everyone else a favor. There were certain people that could have won that HOH that probably would have put him up. Yeah. Um, But he lucked out that Kylan was the person and Kylan wasn't uh, in that Royal flesh Alliance. So that whole, that this week's HOH competition was like uh, the whole time I was like, what is going on? (laughs) Like, yeah. What is happening? (laughs) Yeah. Didn't they like, and I mean, we could talk about big brother for like an hour, but, I don't know that Aza is made for this game. No, like at all. No, I was, I was kind of high on her early, but I was she's, too. Not, she's not doing much for me right now. Um, I mean, I, we should have started doing like weekly power rankings, which yeah. I think would have been, but that would take a lot of time to talk about big brother every week. And I'm not sure we need to do that. Yeah. Um, she's somebody that uh, probably would have dropped down my rankings yes. quite a bit the last yes. few weeks. Um, Tiffany, I still think is playing pretty well, but I think she had a pretty bad, I think she had a bad week. I think she had a, she had a screw up with Hannah uh, mentioning the the Royal flush and the whole thing with, with um, Derek and um, Brittany and Aza. I mean, there seems to be some sort of, she's almost playing too hard. Yeah. No, I I agree. She's playing harder than the rest of the house. Um, I agree. And, and I mean, I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I, her, her plan for the cookout, I've loved from the get go yeah. and the, it's in place and they're not doing it. I mean, they kind they kind of are, I guess they kind of are. I mean, because they, they've they, got Claire and Derek. Up well, there, they, at but, this point, there's not much else they can do. I mean, yeah. they, there's not yeah. a lot. The, the cookouts made it and all their side pieces have made it as I mean, so Kylan to put up, I mean, he has to put up somebody. Right. So as we were watching point. Sunday, um, Christy will watch occasional episodes with me, but she doesn't she hasn't watched every episode. She doesn't know exactly what's going on. But I was like, there have been like seven alliances this season, but none of them have each other's backs. It's like they yeah. just want to have an alliance to say they have an alliance, but then they're going to go do their own thing. I think the cookout's going to last. Um, it's they're going to piss each other off along the way. But I think yeah. that I think at the core of it, the cookout is so much more than that. And I yeah. think they're going to that. I think that'll hold. Yeah. Um, just because they're they're going to they're going to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, at this point, they're going to have to start putting people up that are a part of their side pieces or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. Um, there's not much else you can do. So, yeah, he Kylan won HOH. He put up Claire and Derek, Derek F. F, who volunteered himself because he just didn't want to see Aza or Brittany go through that mm-hmm. which I mean I, for part of me can't blame him but also like I mean whatever yeah. um, it is what it is so that's kind of where we're at now uh, we have not seen um, the POV competition yet uh, that'll be on uh, Wednesday, Wednesday um, and then we'll have another eviction on Thursday so we will talk plenty more Big Brother um in the weeks ahead so anything else we've been going on this show for probably way too long yeah um we put chapters in the episodes if you want to skip over any of it yeah that's something too we we haven't we haven't really mentioned that on the show yeah anybody that's still listening thank you yeah (laughs) i have talked to more and more people that do listen or at least subscribe and things like that so thank (laughs) you people um but yeah we we do have titles or 
uh, chapters on the YouTube page and on um, the other ones too. So if you are looking list- to listening to something in particular, want to listen to something in particular, we try to um, organize that a little bit so that you can do yeah. that. So we'd love for you to listen to the whole episode, but if you don't want to listen, yes, for an hour but we half, also understand that yeah. not everybody wants to hear us ramble on about Illinois football for 30 minutes. And not everybody cares about big brother and yeah. all this other stuff. So we get that either way. We or, appreciate you or the vault. No one cares. The, or, or the, the vault, vault. <laughs> or the vault. I care well, about the well, vault. I didn't even know about the vault. <laughs> Actually, something else that we just started this week. We were looking for something yeah. random to watch. Did you ever watch The Mole? The TV show? Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it's on Netflix, too. Bit. Is it? We started that. Anderson Cooper, okay. the host. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I remember when that was on. Yeah. Um, I don't I think I it. watched it a ton. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Um, I, the show just, I haven't watched the whole thing, but The White Lotus is the new thing on HBO. Um I'm only a couple episodes into it. It just, I think the series, I think it's like a, a mini series type thing. I think it just ended. Um, so I'm trying to get caught up on that, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely a bit enjoying that the first couple episodes at least. So, all right, we're going to shut it down for the week. As I said, we've talked way too long um, this week. So we will uh, try to do better next time as uh, Mike and Tony would say on PTI next week. We'll talk about uh, Illinois football preview their season. Um, look ahead to their week week zero matchup with Nebraska. Um, I'm sure we'll have some other things to talk about, whether that's baseball or movies or who knows what will be on the docket for next week, but we will tackle that when we get there. Craig, anything else for the people out there? No, nothing. Okay. You're wonderful. Don't forget to like, (laughs) subscribe, comment, share, send us an email. uh, If you'd like to chat, if you'd like to send us some, some suggestions, feel free to send us a tweet on the old tweeter. Um, both of our, we always talk about our Twitter accounts. Um, but if you still need to know, I'm at the Logan Lee, he's at Craig W. Choate and our show is at no one asked us pod for Craig. I'm Logan. We'll see you guys next week until then. Bye.